Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Before today's segment, we want to give you a chance to win a real cool prize. All you have to do is follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Join now for your chance to win an autographed Doug Gilmer Flame jersey, the real leader of the 89 Flames Cup winning team, the club's best looking jersey. Join us on Twitter and Facebook to win. It's that easy. Henry Burris joins us today. Uh, this is his first interview since he's been traded to the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and that's still got a weird ring to it. How's it feeling for you? You know, actually, it hasn't set in yet, but uh, I know come training camp time, it'll truly set in because instead of just driving from my house to McMahon for practice, I'll be getting on a WestJet or Air Canada flight heading out east just to find a new place to stay and, and you know, going through all the changes. So, truthfully, that's when it'll set in for me. George Cortez is now the head coach of the uh, Hamilton Tie Cats, which is the perfect case scenario for you. Someone that knows you, someone that can uh, comfort you, guide you, <laughs> be your mentor, help you along. You know each other. The best year you've ever had was playing under him. Well, I tell you, that's all you want. I mean, as a quarterback, you need a person who believes in you, number one, but you also need somebody who's in your corner, uh, knows your strengths, knows the things that you enjoy doing when you're on the field, allows you just to go out and play without thinking, play in a flow. But I also know George is a guy who pays attention to the most important factors in the game of sports, which are the small details. Because a lot of times, yeah, you have all these great athletes, you're making all the big plays, you're winning games, putting up yards. But George is a guy who still harps on the small things because if you don't cover those right away, they'll come back and haunt you in the end. And that's why we always had success under George as an offense. And uh, to be back with him, uh, to, to me, uh, it's an exciting time. And uh, it's hard for me to even sleep right now, looking forward to the season. Did you feel John Huffnagel wasn't in your corner? Well, the thing is, uh, different You regime. can say yes, Mike. Well, I, You can say yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those situations where I wasn't Huffnagel's guy. Yeah. Um, you know, he made an investment in Drew Tate, uh, bringing him over, you know, giving them a draft pick, bringing him over from Saskatchewan. I was part of the Tom Higgins uh, era and, you know, coming in with all the new ownership, Ted Hellert and those guys running it. There was a little bit of a quarrel going on up top with those guys, and, you know, I, I stayed out of that because my job was just to play football. But... We achieved a lot of success with John Huffnagel, and uh, for him to give me the opportunity to play, I was definitely thankful for that. And of course, I was a little bit upset the way things uh, ended here because uh, you know, I still felt that there was a lot of things we could have accomplished because there were a lot of quarterbacks who went through three-game losses in the CFL. Some of our top quarterbacks, Anthony Calvillo, uh, you look at all the guys out in BC there, they went through the same situations, but they stuck with their guys and they achieved success in the end. And, uh, but the teams who stayed and stuck with the ship finished out the season strong, but unfortunately, we didn't do that here. Every quarterback in the CFL had a rough stretch this year. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. And, uh, you know, if you look at the guys who won the Great Cup, mm -hmm. they went through a seven-game stretch yeah. where there was talk about shipping him out, getting rid of Wally. So I guess patience is a virtue, not only uh, when you're as a, as a quarterback, but the guys that are calling the shots. Yeah, I mean, it's so true because the last thing you want to have your players doing, especially your important players, your decision makers, you know, like the quarterbacks, uh, the offensive linemen who you, you want to feel that you can go out there and play 100 percent, play full speed, not fearing the fact that if you make a mistake, you're going to get benched. And that's kind of one of the things I had to put up with there for a little bit. And, uh, you know, uh, it put me in a position where I started playing tentative. Yes, and that was true. And I was upset. You know, when I had a good talk with Coach Huffnagel, you know, I told him, I was like, man, you know, the fact of, of the situation that I had to play in and the, and the factors that were taking place and the change that I saw coming, you know, the fact that they were starting to put Drew and implement him in, into the system and into games more often, you know, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. However, with myself playing with as much pride and being here from seeing Calgary from a, a 4 and 14 juggernaut of, of the circus that we all knew that was going on here to bring the team to a, a perennial powerhouse year in and year out playing for the Grey Cup. Uh, I played with pride because of those things and I was a part of bringing that team from the bottom to the top. And uh, just seeing the fact that the light was getting closer for me put me in a position that I wasn't used to. It's a position where you don't want to play like you're on eggshells. You want to feel you can go out there and just use your God-given ability, do what they brought you here to do, and that's to play and help the team win games and be victorious. What does George Cortez do differently than John Huffnagel does as far as mapping out a game plan and uh, running the ship? Well, one of the things I have to say, in due fairness to both sides, is I never experienced Huffnagel as an offensive coordinator because uh, yeah. 
his entire time here, I had uh, Coach George uh, Cortez and also then Dave Dickinson took over from there. So, you know, I had a staff that I worked with before Huffnagel got involved. So the one thing that I enjoy about George is he, he takes the Wally system, but also his own system of, of the many places that he's been. Uh, he was once a defensive back coach, uh, an offensive line coach, a special teams coach. So he knows all the factors of what it takes to be successful. But he makes sure that each quarterback that he's coached has always been surrounded by great players. I mean, you know, he coached us here in 98, and we uh, won a great cup with Jeff Garcia. He, he was uh, one of our offensive coordinators in. Uh, he surrounded him with guys like the Allen Pitts, made sure those guys were running the right routes, putting, putting your players in positions to make plays, and that's what a coach's job is, and he'll tell you that first, firsthand. I mean, when they interview him all the time after teams are successful, whomever he's been with, he says, hey, don't put the camera on me. Put it on the guys who made the plays. All I do is draw them up and sit back and yell at them when they make a mistake. So he, he's a real guy. I mean, and you love having guys like that. When you make a mistake, he's in your face, telling you how you can get better, challenging you, and those are the things that you ask for. And so, in all due fairness, I was never able to work with Huffnagel because he was still at a distance. Uh, but again, you know, uh, I've heard he's done a lot of great things. George learned a lot of things from Huffnagel. But to me, George takes care of the little things. And when you have a guy like that that makes sure his guys are in positions to be successful as a professional player, that's all you can ask for and your gifts take, take you from there. Hamilton, I thought, was one quarterback away from advancing even further in the playoffs than they have. They had kind of a, an up and down year at quarterback. So really a pretty decent team, pretty solid defense, solid O-line, some exciting but young receivers. So mm -hmm. I think this could be, other than going to the Eskimos, I think this would have been the best case scenario for you. Well, I tell you, a lot of things were taking place. Uh, you know, we talked to a lot of teams, uh, you know, just trying to figure out where they were going with their future. You know, Winnipeg, of course, Hamilton, Toronto, and even Edmonton. Uh, just trying to figure out what the barometer was looking like there for the future with that team and what they were thinking. Uh, uh, but it was funny what we heard from some. You know, some were looking, some weren't. Some were interested, and some teams that we thought were very interested actually weren't. And so, uh, but to me, it worked out to be with to me the best team possible that's out there. I mean, I mean, a lot of people were talking about Toronto in the future, what it would be like for me going to Toronto. But if you look at things, Toronto has a very good team, but Hamilton I thought was even better. Yeah. Uh, to me, they had the, the veteran leadership of Avon Coburn, uh, a Ray Williams, a middle linebacker, a Stevie Baggs, a Justin Hickman, guys who were perennial all-stars year in and year out, guys who made a lot of plays, gave that team the opportunity to be successful and play in the East Final against Winnipeg, where of course they came up short, but they gave those guys a chance. But then you look at the rookie of the year, wide receiver Chris Williams, to me, one of the most electric players in the CFL at this given time. A guy, he's a small guy in the slot who can make things happen, and uh, he can make a lot of things happen when you get the ball in his hand as a, a, as a returner, punt returner, or uh, just as a wide receiver. He's a big playmaker, but they have a lot of great young receivers, lots of depth in, as far as in the offensive line, especially in Canadian talent. Uh, this team only needs a couple of pieces, and uh, just to be a part of that fold now, to me, I'm very thankful and honored to be a part of the Hamilton Tiger Cat organization. And the more things change, the more they stay the same. And I mean that the quarterback with the biggest rivalry is still going to be Ricky Ray because he's now down the street <laughs> in Toronto, and the league needs this. They need Toronto and Hamilton to bring their game up and have that same kind of rivalry as the Stamps and Eskimos do. They've already had it, but now with two good quarterbacks, this is going to be fun to watch, and it's what the ne league needs. I think Ricky Ray and I are attached to the hip in many no different kidding. ways. I mean, yeah. we have the same agent. We're playing in the same province again. Uh, I think Ricky Ray and I are going to have a dance-off or a sing-off or something, or maybe even a cook-off. Because, I mean, it's like him and I are becoming brothers from Can another mother. Can I just predict uh, he'd win the sing and you'd win the <laughs> dance? <laughs> but you say I can't sing? <laughs> well, uh, Dance? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, Ricky is really going to make Toronto so much better. Yeah. Um, I mean, with his leadership, uh, his ability to make plays, his accurate arm, but also his experience. I mean, that's one thing that they've needed there in a long – they haven't had that in a long time since a Damon Allen. They've been trying to find that quarterback to come in and replace Damon since he left and won in the Grey Cup in Ottawa back in 2005. This team, to me, has been a quarterback and maybe a couple other guys short of being that Grey Cup contender. But you got two teams in South, Southern Ontario – in need of the same things, getting their fans going, bringing that face in that can rally everybody, not, not, not only the fans, but also the troops within the locker room, because to me that's more important than anything else as far as bringing in that guy that people believe in. And both Toronto and Hamilton have done that, and I'm thankful to be a part of that and thankful to be uh, named that guy, because all the hard work you put in, I know Ricky sees it the same way as I do, all the hard work that we've put in 
to help keep our organizations here with both Edmonton and Calgary respectively uh, at the level that we've been able to play at here. Uh, it, it feels good to be wanted and uh, it feels good to be coming in and people are excited about having you a part of it because when you get traded, you know, you take a bit of a, a hit with it into the, you know, section of pride, you know, especially as a man because all the hard work that you put in, you just want to, you know, feel thankful uh, and you want to feel people uh, truly appreciate everything that you've done and now uh, with us moving on together, we'll be battling each other again. Uh, it definitely feels that way. Can utility be a poster? Can utility keep you up at night, dreaming? Can utility put thoughts in your head? Depends on what you mean by utility. Introducing the new Porsche Cayenne and Cayenne S Hybrid. Lighter, more agile, more efficient. More Porsche than ever.